हेलो देर वेलकम बैक टू माई व्यूज एंड न्यूज थ्री न्यू स्टोरीज फर्स्ट वन इज फ्रॉम रोमिया अम्हारा बॉर्डर बिग डेवलपमेंट आई सी वट इज हैपनिंग ऑन द बॉर्डर इज अ बिग डेवलपमेंट वी नो दैट फानो फाइटर्स आर ट्राइंग टू टेक द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट फ्रॉम द अम्हारा रीजन to oromia they have been making incursions into oromia they are trying to organize amharas living in oromia on uh, oromia amhara border now oromia government is responding oromia government uh, has uh, planned something to counter fano's incursions what is oromia government's plan uh, we'll have a look at that i received this information through some sources who are there who confirmed from the ground uh, what oromia government is doing to protect from uh, fano of uh, fighters attacks in oromia secondly we're gondar gondar city uh, is fano totally out of gondar city uh, new year celebrations in gondar city not in other big cities of the amhara region thirdly viewers uh, pmrb's government has hired a new lobbying firm uh, why did the government hire a new lobbying firm what is the name of this lobbying firm who are other clients of this firm uh, what does government want from this firm how much did the government pay to this uh, firm firstly viewers uh, amhara oromia board uh, i have been reporting about fano fighters attacks in oromia so far fano fighters have entered three zones of oromia on different occasions they entered horogodoro valega and they killed uh, a vorada uh, peace and security in charge there they entered the north shore zone of the oromia region a dera vorada in gunde maskal they kidnapped a colonel an endf colonel from gunde maskal they entered ishwa zone of the oromia region to from uh, rarti they entered ajare ajare is in ishwa zone of the oromia so uh, from north shore zone of the amhara region they entered uh, ishwa zone and north shore zone of the oromia region and from gujum they entered horogodoro valega and we saw clashes between oromia security forces and fano fighters uh, there in these three zones uh, fano fighters are not only entering oromia from the amhara region but they are trying to organize amharas living in oromia in border areas of oromia amhara border local amhara youths are being organized and armed by uh fano factions and local level fano factions are being established there how is oromia government defending what is oromia government's plan it's a long border uh oromia amhara border is a long border it cannot be protected by just deployment of oromia security forces uh yes if you deploy all oromia regional police etc then you can defend but it's not possible to make such a large scale deployment ENDF is fighting on multiple fronts e- ENDF cannot secure the entire border and uh, ola has its presence too in oromia uh, though people say that ola and uh, oromia forces are one ola and ENDF are one but still uh, i don't think that ENDF would allow ola to be stronger while endf is involved in the fight against fano of fighters so endf and romia forces they must be careful about ola's expansion too then what is the solution how to protect against to defend from fano's incursions into the romia region it seems that uh, 
Romania government has come up with a plan. Is this plan feasible? Let's see. Uh, but the plan is that now local Oromos are being armed. I received information from two uh, towns of Oromia, which are on Oromia Mahara border, where local Oromos are being armed by Oromia regional government. I am not talking about uh, Oromia security forces. I am talking about Oromo civilians. West Shiva zone of the Oromia region. Ginda Barat and Abuna Ginda Barat both are in West Shiva zone of the Oromia region. Both share border with Amhara, very close to Amhara, Oromia border. And in both these areas, both these uh, Waridas, Oromo civilians are being armed. Amharas live there too, but Oromos are being armed reportedly by Oromia regional government. In Jeldo too, Jeldo is not on border, just a little uh, away from the border. Jeldo as well, where we have confirmed that Romo civilians are being armed. Now, uh, some people from these areas, they say that we are being armed to protect from the attacks of Ola fighters. That Ola fighters carry out attacks, here. that is why uh oromos are being armed my assessment is that government wants to arm these oromos against both groups main concern is fano's entry in romia and main concern is organization of uh, amharas living in border areas so while amharas are organizing themselves they're arming themselves romia government is arming oromo civilians it's a very alarming development viewers while Romia government has every right to protect its territory uh, but arming of civilians is not a solution and by the way Romia government has very limited options how to protect its long border with Amhara it's almost uh, I won't say impossible it's very difficult to protect this entire border while people some groups living uh, on uh, Romia side of the border they have sympathy they have soft corner for foreign fighters so it's so difficult to defend Romia's border that is why civilians are being armed and by the way some civilians don't want to be armed Fano so far has has not entered West Shiva but if in West Shiva Oromos are being armed I think same could be happening in other Oromia uh, uh, zones, uh, Oromia towns, Varadas, which are on Oromia Amhara border. Civilians don't want to be armed, they know, because that if they're armed uh, and the other side comes to know of that they're being armed, they'll be targeted. So it's a very alarming situation on border. ENDF should deploy as much as it can. Uh, deploy itself on border. This is the only way forward. Republican guards. Uh, otherwise, we could see large scale Oromo Amhara armed conflict scattered. Obviously, uh, you could see uh, uh, clashes, direct clashes between Oromos and Amharas, locals living in Romia uh, in border areas. Uh, meanwhile, uh, OLF Romo Liberation Fund issued a statement two days ago. Well, it says that civilians are being extrajudicially killed by Ethiopian security forces in Oromia, Oromo civilians. And in Kalam Valaga, in West Shiva too, some Oromo civilians were extrajudicially killed according to OLF, Oromo Liberation Front, which is political wing of Oromo Liberation Army. Let's see, will the strategy of arming of civilians by Oromia government work or not? Secondly, we also go on the relative calm and peace in Gondar. I think uh, Zinash Tachio, PM Abi's wife, and uh, Minister of Industries, uh, uh, who is Sanamhara, uh, Daniel Kebre, and others, they have managed to uh, convince Gondar elders. Uh, to be neutral 
or that these elders should not support final fighters. New Year celebrations were held in Gondar city yesterday. Today there were programs in Gondar city reportedly. I did not hear about such celebrations in other big cities of the Amhara region like in Debre Marcos, like in Debre Birhan, like in Shorobit. I don't know about uh, Bahirdar, maybe there was something held there because there is government uh, headquarter there. But uh, Gondar was predominantly anti-government a few months ago. There was a big rally in Gondar city in support of the Fano fighters. Then came counter-offensive on Fano when Fano was inside Gondar city and Fano had to retreat from Gondar. After that, military gradually consolidated its control of Gondar. Meeting was held, if you remember, in a video a few days ago between Gondar elders and uh, Ethiopian military and prosperity party officials and Gondar elders. Meeting participants were given money to. So, uh, bribes seem to be working. Zinash so has relatives there uh, and uh, Milak available, Minister of Industry, other, they have connection there. All these efforts seem to be bearing fruit in uh, Gondar for the government. That is why Fano has been unable to carry out any major attack in Gondar city since its withdrawal from Gondar a few weeks ago. Fano managed to re-enter Debre uh, Marcos. It is operating close to Shorov with Debre Marcos, uh, close to the Libala too, it tied out an attack, close to Bahirda too. But Gondar relative calm there, it means that uh, government has managed to improve its ties with Gondar elders, Gondar residents it seems. Let's see. Third of yours, the PMRB's government has hired a new lobbying firm. Lobbying is legal in the US, in some other countries to uh, countries hire lobbying firms. These lobbying firms charge their clients and these lobbying firms work for the protection of the interests of their uh, clients. All countries, almost all uh, countries uh, have lobbying firms working in the US. And uh, TPLF also hired lobbying firms when TPLF was in power. PMRB's government has hired a new lobbying firm uh, to work for government's interests in Europe and America. APCO Worldwide is the name of this firm. And uh, reportedly, UE's government uh, uh, is also a client of this firm. UAE's Ports Authority, which is under the control of UAE's government, is a client of this uh, lobbying firm. So maybe uh, UAE's ruler Mohammed bin Zaid and PMRB discussed and uh, it was proposed to PMRB to hire this firm. So both UAE's government and PMRB's uh, government both are now customers clients of APCO worldwide which is working for the protection of Ethiopian government's interests. What does Ethiopia want from the US and from the West? Well so what Ethiopia wants immediately is loan, grant and Ethiopia wants an end to the uh, mandate of UN Inquiry Commission. Uh, about which a decision is going to be made this month. Uh, Ethiopia wants uh, uh, reinstatement of Agwa from the US. It wants uh, trade uh, preferential treatment from uh, European countries too. So these uh, lobbying firms are paid. I don't know how much is being paid, but that just shows that. Uh, RB US, RB EU relations are not very ideal. That is why a new firm is being hired, new firm has been hired and uh, unknown sum of money is being paid. Uh, can this new firm work to protect Ethiopian interests? Because uh, we know that now EU and US, they are putting pressure upon the government to talk to Fano and Ola. Talks were held between Fano, uh, between Ola and government did not work. And Mike Hammer is in Ethiopia these days. Before his visit, he, he visited Brussels. He held a meeting with EU leaders. And after that, statements from EU uh, and US State Department asking Ethiopian government to find a negotiated solution to conflicts in Amhara Romia. 
so eu us want ethiopia to talk to fano ola etc but government believes maybe that it can crush fano fighters it wants military operation uh, to continue that is why a new lobbying firm hired to further ethiopian government's narratives in europe and america thank you for watching